Tusk so as a garlic, stock to go. Na bigost gilk no skag. Ha kiert an meal a chil a stut na chipper us of war. Hoffat se hule se ichles ru, se wool is tain ye try. Ha noon te hiat an kind non crook and yet the hook of bass. That's a verse from a song by Neil MacLeod, the Sky Bard, made late last century. It is called Will Gaelic Die? Addressing the language, the poet asks it to reawaken, raise its voice, showing no fear or reluctance, for hundreds of thousands are committed to it and will not let it die. Hundreds of thousands, as we shall see, makes too high a figure now, literally at any rate. Yet it is true to say that hundreds of thousands of people in Scotland and elsewhere now have a feeling of goodwill towards Gaelic and would not be happy if it ever died. We are thinking of that wider audience in putting this programme together. Gaelic Scotland may be thought of in about the 4th century AD, that is, some 1600 years ago. But what Gallic colonies there were became strongly reinforced in the 5th century when Dalriada, in the central and southwestern areas of Argyll, was settled. These Gallic speaking settlers crossed over from Ireland, where they had been settled for several centuries. Some may have crossed to Galloway then, too, for the sea channels between Ireland are very narrow at the Rins of Galloway and at the Mull of Kintyre, only 14 miles at the Mull. A little later, about the middle of the 6th century, Iona had become the chief religious centre of Dalrieda, and Columba, who was of royal blood, came there as abbot, and using Iona as his base, and Dalrieda in general as a larger power base, he extended the influence of the Gallic Christian Church to the more easterly and northerly parts of Scotland, which were at that time controlled by the Picts. Thus, it was probably by this process that the Gallic language first began to take hold in central and eastern and northern Scotland as a prestige language, the language associated with the new religion. Of course, that new religion had come to the Gaels originally through Latin-speaking missionaries as part of the Roman Empire's expansion. But it had been acclimatised in the Gallic world, which in its turn produced its own missionaries. Columba and his successors in Scotland must have had considerable prestige as representatives of a powerful and well-organised international religious body. And since Gaelic was from early times brought into service in this organisation, it had great prestige also. Religious foundations, such as Iona, also played a highly important part in the fostering of the arts, as, for example, the arts of poetry, manuscript illumination, sculpture, architecture and silverwork. At this point we should look back very briefly and see where this language Gaelic came from in the period before the 4th century AD and who or what its linguistic relatives were. At this time, and for some centuries afterwards, the forms of Gaelic spoken in Scotland and Ireland were virtually the same, and it is proper enough to refer to all the varieties as Gaelic. It is only later that the variations become so great that we are forced to distinguish them as Scottish and Irish Gaelic. Gaelic was one of the main branches of the Celtic family of languages, and for the last 2,000 years or so it has been spoken in Ireland, Scotland and the Isle of Man, with a notable modern colony in Nova Scotia. The other main branch of the Celtic language family is that called the Brythonic or British branch. In modern times, it survives in the forms of Welsh and Breton, spoken in Brittany. Cornish also belong to this branch, but it is now extinct, except in an artificially revived form. Forms of Welsh or British were formerly spoken in many parts of England and Scotland. For example, in Cumberland and in Strathclyde, and in the small British kingdoms in central Scotland. Some of these British or Welsh dialects or languages survived quite late, probably until the 11th century AD in Scotland. And there was yet another Celtic language, or language that was partly Celtic, spoken in Scotland, namely Pictish. It was more closely related to Welsh and Breton than to Gaelic. It was spoken mainly to the north of the Firth of Forth 
and especially in the east and in the northeast. Many traces of the other Celtic languages still survive, especially in place names. Here are a few examples of these with the Celtic elements emphasised in the pronunciation. One from British. Perth, Kincardine, Strathpeffer, Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Pennycook, Lanark, Echelfeche. Secondly, from Pictish, the large series of names containing in some form the Pictish element pit, probably referring to a small portion of arable land. Pitlochri, Pitodri, Pitanweem, Petty. But Gaelic names are thick on the ground almost all over Scotland, however much they may have become disguised in later centuries. Half the name in a number of the instances you have just heard is Gaelic, as in Kincardin, Strathpeffer, Aberdeen, Pitlochri. Edinburgh has its Gaelic equivalent, Dunedin, which appears as Dunedin in New Zealand. Wander across the map of Scotland from south to north, from east to west, and it is full of Gaelic names. Carrick, Dalry, Kilmarnock, Largs, Cumbernauld, Kilbride, Dunfermline, Braemar, Elgin. Or look more closely at the local names in and around Glasgow, and you will find Gaelic footprints all around you. Govan, Yoker, Shettleston, Inchinnan, Mahego, Dumbarton, Balor, and so on. In the 16th centuries or so, since Gaelic became part of the Scottish scene, its fortunes have fluctuated greatly. We can envisage a long period of steady build-up in the early centuries, and this is the process that we see enshrined in all these place names. As part of this process, we find the kingdoms of the Picts and the Scots uniting and coalescing in the mid-9th century and a Gallic dynasty eventually coming to rule the whole of Scotland. The Scots were, in fact, the Gallic-speaking Dalriadic settlers, and as a symbol of their pervading influence, the whole country came to be called their land, Scotland. Gaelic continued to be spoken in many parts of Scotland until quite modern times, in parts of Ayrshire and Galloway until the 17th century, around Loch Lomond until the 19th and early 20th century. So too in the greater part of Perthshire and in Speyside, in Donside until the early part of this century in a few cases, and in Upper Deeside until after the last war. There are still pockets of Gaelic speech in the easterly parts of the country, from East Perthshire through Invernessshire and up the east coast from Inverness to Caithness. But the main areas of Gaelic speech are now in the west and predominantly in the islands. In the Outer Isles, Gaelic is still very much an everyday language, although the flood of English television in particular is badly undermining its use among younger people. In the last ten years, never in the last two or three, there has been a great revival of interest in the Gaelic language and in many other Gaelic matters. Songs, history, poetry and so on. There are Gaelic classes all over the country and indeed in many places abroad. Gaelic poetry is frequently read at public readings. There is a large audience for Gaelic music, whether on TV, radio or on records and cassettes. Gaelic is undoubtedly popular in a sense it has not been for a long time, and it seems likely that this new interest is here to stay.
Flodden. To fight the Saxons is right, no rising followed by flight. Edge of sword, point of spear, let us ply them with good cheer. Against Saxons, I say to you, lest they rule our country too, fight roughly like the Irish gale, we will have no English pale. Destroy the roots from which they grow, too great their increase, and lay low each Saxon, robbing him of life, give the same treatment to his wife. Burn their women, coarse, untrue, burn their uncouth children too, and burn down their black houses, rid us of their grouses. Send their ashes down the flood when you've burnt their flesh and blood. Show no rue to living Saxon, death dealing, salmon hero, tax them. Remember, cheek of raspberry hue, that Saxons lorded over you. Keep in memory their spite, as Saxon power has grown in might. Since of the gale there now remain but scant survivors of the slain. Together gather all your men, strike fear into the foe again. Attack the Saxons in their land, awake, Macallan, understand, O golden-haired one, that a fighter profits much by sleeping lighter. <laughs> Oh, 
Du hast ich mir neue Gissen, meid und bewahre. Heim mit Kares neue Milan und Tiers, gönn mir jaloch. Es nur der Rane mit dem Balle, charo Eier und Kjolan. Wenn im Nahen die Fuels, wenn im Krug ich in Brunach. Es war mir grü, was die hier auch nach Schienex und Jomer, sie nach Schiene von Nunek, es war klingig mir Chorag. Fatalt, Maar in die hen vis kind in zijn jaren, door een goede kier aan, zat de gietje via waarheid. Hier groei geen zul, kom ik een aaskarig, kom kiel voor een beskliegkes, kus in die koek aan jaren. Sun bursting goldenly from its meshing. The sky became scorched and gloomy, awe-inspiring. The waves grew dark, thick, dun-bellied, angry and sallow. The sky had every single hue you find in Tartan. A dog's tooth appeared in the west, a storm threatened. Swift-moving clouds by wind shredded. Squally showers, too. They hoisted the sails, speckled, towering, close-woven. They stretched the ropes, stiff, tough, and taut, to the long, tall masts, red, resined, pointed. They were tied in trusty knots, efficiently. 
through the eyes of iron hooks and round ring bolts. They adjusted every bit of gear, smartly, neatly. Each man sat ready to watch his own portion. The windows of the heavens opened, dark grey, spotted, to let the rough wind blow through them in fierce anger. When we fell down from the tops of the shaggy billows, the heel of the ship just about gored the shelly sea floor. The ocean was churned and dashed against itself. The seals and other great creatures were in dire straits. The roaring and rage of the ocean, the ship in its movement, dashing the white of their brains through the billows. As they howled in horror and dread and bitter sorrow, we are the underdogs here, let us aboard you. All the small fish in the sea had their white bellies upwards, killed by the raging storm in their thousands. Surfacing stones and shellfish from the seabed were torn up by the pounding of haughty ocean. The whole sea turned to porridge, foul and turbid, with the blood and filth of splayed sea beasts turned red and torrid. Creatures with horns and talons, flippers, splay feet, many-headed, howling from wide jaws, their mouths gaping, the deep all full of goblins with paws weaving, a crawl with claws and tails of great monsters. But when the ocean failed to win from us surrender, she took pity and smiled wanly, making peace with us. There was not a mast unbent, a sail not tattered, a yard arm fast, a yard ring whole, an oar undamaged. The tiller was split badly, the rudder shattered, every plank groaned and creaked, being cracked and split. The galley of Clanranald eventually got home safely to harbour, and this is how Mac Master Alistair tells about the final stages of the journey in the original Gaelic. Garum and Naraike, she hive runya, it crush who lila, Gundur Garavu, Herav Gloroch, or Dushini. Hoki ointo in it of Urkroch and ar, is Hini going a clar, re, mean yal, and jay a tavin. Hokshin Puyahus and ar tree, hum natulen, Jerk on the road, you be savalt, or vas brutal. And shin, vem shin the shul hana, valoch, hulin, is lection a crying veen, yarak, gast, er fat hurler. Hushin mach, rive, hul, vashkamp, gach, veena, jen you is the boy in mach varash, in yelaninan. Ranchin in himmerich, re, tulukanoch, and jaramut. Is Gafshin Jew long first, ek bar of Harakaradish. He leaks in Achrichen, Gesocher, and some Rodshin. Gafshin Bierg is Joch Ganarkis, is Ranchin Corny. Who in Europe? 
کارم بونی بخاری نیا هر استولسک هوی آرا کارم بونی آهی آبا آهی آبا آهی آبا هر ساری و هوی آرا گان هر خ بخاری نیا هر ساری و هوی آرا گان هر گاهی آبا کاشان کنیم با هوی آرا دان ولنان بخاری نیا کاشان کنیم با هوی آرا دان ولنان نهی آبا سریک لای هوی آرا می فتر خ بخاری نیا سریک لای هوی آرا می فتر گاهی آبا و ها خبام هوی آرا هک ول بخاری نیا ما ها خبان هوی آرا هک ول آهی آبا یبی و اکنا هوی آرا کلان یواریخ بخاری نیا یبی و اکنا هوی آرا کلان یواریخ آهی آبا آهی آبا آهی آبا رجا خناخ هوی آرا سوال و خرخ بخاری نیا رجا خناخ هوی آرا سوال و خرخ آهی آبا ما ها خنان هوی آرا اکمل و ایسا بخاری نیا ما ها خنان هوی آرا اکمل و ایسا آهی آبا ننگونی نیا هوی آرا چلی لو روخت بخاری نیا ننگونی نیا هوی آرا چلی لو روخت آهی Spianing punas, hui yoro, baro kuleng bakharinya. Spianing punas, hui yoro, baro kuleng yo hiya ba. Lemukmeran, hui yoro, art nestuak bakharinya. Lemukmeran, hui yoro, art nestuak yo hiya ba. Kefalahev mer, hui yoro, nakawanya bakharinya.
In this great house I have been joyful, dancing merry on a wide floor, the fiddle playing to put me to sleep, the pipe playing to wake me in the morning, bear my greeting to Dunvegan. And it was only a few years later that the pibroch whose ground you are to hear was composed. It is introduced and played by Pipe Major Donald MacLeod. Pibroch, the grounder theme of Lament for Donald of Lagan. Donald of Lagan was born in 1543, succeeded to Glengarry in 1574, and died aged 102 on the 2nd of February 1645, the day of the Battle of Inverlochy. In an old Mackenzie manuscript, he is accused of idolatry, an action was raised against him in Edinburgh, in which it was alleged that he had a painter in Loch Carran, which he then owned, painting images, and that he worshipped the image of St. Cone, called in Edinburgh Glengarry's God. The composer of the lament was Patrick Moore McCreeman. The jig which follows is called the Glasgow Police Pipers, and although it requires a lot of digital dexterity, it is essentially a fun tune. Uh <laughs>
Heaven's warmth to meadows bloom, though the shillings have their cattle with folds full of lowing calves. Isla has lost her people. The sheep have emptied homes. Will you carry this clear message as I see it to the bard? The poor will find no shelter, nor the traveller his rest, nor will preacher find an audience. Strangers, wrong and tax of one. The spotted adders coiling on the floors whereon there grew the great men that I saw here. Take this message to the bard. Nan Douglas there was reading an extract from a poem by William Livingstone of Isla, 
where he mourns the clearances that took place there. And John Smith does the same for 19th century Lewis. They handed over to the snipe land of happy folk. They dealt without humanity with people who were kind. Because they might not drown them, they dispersed them overseas. A thraldom worse than Babylon's was the plight that they were in. Am Fachgetui, you ich vor, die Schnapper ön Wachje. Am Fachgu kolle set der Hiel, ries drie nien lis jen. Am Kolach wessen in der Träum, falles schara ver malles grui. Savias chdia traum er kuhle kien grubje, wach grui. Chanachgetui, wie ich kind hör. Rys yn apra rhyn y glor, y mis cyn yn cladoch caroch siar fo alles clio fo loi. Yn charoch sio, ag ys sio chai, sgach fichet iaroch fo yn tŵs, har y nisio niem yn ŵr, chwn bieg y clain ys dŵr sy'n tŵr. Sgach 
vich het voor haar triel, gij die saure boeien en bla. Is roon doe gosnig en klaas, tas in mien het hele klaar. Ik is lave tikkelig schuif, moest dat geiltje aan hem roei. Ik is lik en kosnig tjeen, een korp kusaaf gergoei en roei. Is veel het tjeen, maar niet doe het droeg toei vaartig bocht. Via lich en doe gosnig kroei, is glas de kattel zoen en nog. An extract from George Campbell Hayes Ur Black Caha, Our Field of Battle. Who has stayed to listen to the wind of the oceans as it sings its lonely song in the rushes of the furrows? The ploughman is beyond the oceans, winning life from the gloom of the age-old forest. The house that was warm and hospitable is roofless, and the wind and the rain are guesting in. The township is cold and quiet as the grave, and as people are on the cold waves of the world, opening with the key of necessity the door of the birth chamber of every wind, sowing and harvesting, battle and buying on the threshold of the birth chamber of every wind. Our blood flows in the roar of the battlefields, our sweat flows in the silent woods, there is a lodestone in every earth for us, while our mother is left despised, dying as we strike fierce blows on the far-off rim of the world, without a word or a blow to help her in our pitiful condition. It is time for us to cease from far-off battles, to turn our back to the western sea and our face to the bonny land that our fathers entrusted to us from God. Scotland is our lodestone. Scotland is our field of battle. It is she that our sweat will water. It is she that the heat of our blood will warm. There is room for every quality that is ours in her glens and her cities. There is a need for thought and courage between the threshold and the end of the township. Anjina Skatan, Le Rodi Machomaj, Gara Marchrachtigan Salin Karoshek von Bial, Sal, Sempichi Levintegu, Snamiaren Kranje Gurit, Janek Gulok, No Hokoglianov Kusokur, Kummer, Sheskur, Falain, Gunverok, Snasulen, Hotoin, Rifia. Bepunus Kyonne Hertrigakat Nandralen, Ek Kura den Kuchtoch, Hals of us, sith gautoch, and sassin, but heiltjen doosje harat as ne meeltjen varinjenot, gun en marre, geer, idden krachken, is jaloch gewachken, nan kistje, is marre bengare, huletu, grond heet, brustje. Ach, wat krachtje gaan oelje, idden krie, gachom al fallen, is werig kuchta en hege, schlischen, afanat nan gaul. Ik was op een rond behaast, en er joog had gachie, gat nacht bij mijnjak. Je doeitje, rapoch, jouri, maar was je dan aan gaaf, jenne gat teunje. De gelm waren nog, le een mag gegooien. Houd in je klusje keesjak, er wijn kwee gaastel, die prieren van een gelachtje te leren. Samishin am hui isho is gliwe na fachil hiarapis. Genissen en jidin av di akwa yach an amintin. Ach eun tje at in amintin, usse nat huier bial o kupin, nat at gui himpli, nat a chote du kujok, s nat a vrok na chosich imis raad voorlet. Hab es gala du nat la, Simme mat in je skuldje schatten, zwat al waan gorschle salen, ze gu jare rotte skinne, stort ak en rotschle tjenne. Ha gole tussen moe je in jarwen, no rooit, no varks, no nieuwe gele einste en is een ingenialen, 
na kiol of ruot er of ruot the hue suit and rise not room not young cattle. Ha holo to my hekis no railton, my vound re and coon transparent. Sa holo to my hues and yon the count but up a cavortly. Ha suit and shin her beal a cooping, snoon a thun a rock, imagoni. Sma vidas a minister the live or spitalach a gillian a tinchin. Kain hit to her lion ele, sharam on her teeth of the shefellas. Sour of a doorstick to me, you liquish. Fanyor is chistiness. Rosin a fosclic sour in my rude people at the heine. Skain he could do it in my bass, a similar high fass. Uo the tenants the palach and a chick at the hulk go yam. Go sere with the hulk and malat, do nisha to liagachi. Tra rach and gal, mar inchin dunya foskilchle or neskine. Spalich nan shesun an kuch aira chis skrut an yaniyok. Skiar chaula truhts of hala, gunaramok. Tashin srach luskum at the chasen. Gunaramok at the spirit court and at the chusuhul three of an ortu. Ach chumustu, minochus, slan at the nochinta. Love Hale, let all Machaulai. He got a no ass as no crack, Sig pyrgyn yn nhoas a ancara y chyhef lai yn sŵr, y chwrs yr lwch gyfale gyllad saloch, sianasant, slwydoch. A mesion, edd mar y fymysg, coicroch, yn ei tar, chotion, er slwch na tîr. Agos ar amser cwtioch, fan y chymi, le mae hwyl yn coioch, sianachus, y gyrhus, sŵl mae chyn bynoch. Y gyllus, na rian, Bauri hasin agus ankara sambale dain och hes chavor chafate rishna kraik. Vanichimi in a strat in hesela larokan sundustlich. Daus kem grain ek kasen loma. Van a flej and tu sku echtrik and gloset sul vio a fev. For har as yaloch. Jed ul mo hege chol var, skruyen mar fama granat. This program was devised, written and presented by Derek Thompson. It was produced by George Philp and Alan Ramsey for Scotch Productions, with the support of the Gaelic Books Council.